Right, get the base of this camera on. Let's remove the advanced lever. Remove the three or four screws I'd use to hold this in place. Lift that off. Take our freshly cleaned base plate. Make sure that the frame counter engages. Run the screws back in. not to drop screws down where they can't be found. Oh, that's really doing its best to get away. So I was having some thoughts as to why this camera died and uh, what I suspect happened because we know it was gummy and the shutter was reluctant to cock and really I'd made no major. Alright well I've got all those screws back in place on the base plate. What I was saying was I believe that the reason the camera had failed was we already know the lubricants were very sticky and gummy. They are much, much worse. Things become much more viscous and sticky in cold weather than in warm weather. This one camera very likely had been behaving itself quite nicely in the summer. And come the harsh cold winter, the lubricants went like treacle, effectively jamming things up. And that's probably what the problem was. Had the camera continued to be used in a much more benign climate, quite possibly the problem wouldn't have surfaced for some time to come. So our base plate, original base plate is back on the camera. I removed the bracket that held the spring on the top there and I can now move forward with various other minor tasks. I will get the prism and meter and everything and the top cover back on before I do any of the leatherettes, I think. Um, one task we can do is put two screws back into that chrome trim at the front there. If I can lay my hands on them. They can't be too far away. Here they are. And I'll put a tiny blob of glue onto that wire to stop that moving. Uh, it's correctly positioned at the moment. I don't want it twisting around. Well, I had intended in talking you through the process of disassembling the prism and finder assembly and cleaning it. But 
As I inspected the prism and finder assembly, I found that it was almost perfect and the only flaws were some little specks of dust on the outside surface of the screen at the bottom, which easily cleaned away. So I'm afraid dealing with finders and dismantling the prism assembly is going to have to wait for another job. This one's not going to need it. So, now I just need to refit the meter. And I'll move on to that. So here we have the exposure meter. about the distant lawn mowing noise in the background. Here we have the exposure meter. Now I put a short screw in here while I was working on the camera. We can put the original screw back in there now, which is long enough to pass through the meter, this bracket, and well also, the important thing there is that the screw is not too long, because if it's too long, it's directly above the transfer shaft, and that causes some drama. That will actually cause the transfer shaft to lock, and that would be potentially disastrous. So I'm checking my meter now. making sure I've got it in the right position. If I'd been very careful, I would have made sure that I hadn't disturbed it when I'd removed it from the camera. But I wasn't that careful. Get this seated over the gear underneath. It is seated. And I will be able to check the meter against the light source I have and assuming that everything is correct I can clean the top cover and put it back in place. First I'll do up that screw and I'll make sure that the film advance is good, so that screw is not too long, I know it didn't um, jam up anything. And I will put the top cover on temporarily, check it against the calibrated light source, make sure that the meter reads correctly, and uh, as soon as I've got that done, it'll be clean up the top cover, close up the camera, refit all the leatherettes and send it back to its owner. i to remove that chrome button. The one that I've... The replacement chrome button. Not that the original chrome button was especially ugly after we wriggled it out but uh, because the threads buggered on it it's not really an option to put it back or more truthfully I could put it back but I would only be storing up trouble for the next pork person to come along right so I'll pop this button in place loosely finger tight Set the film speed to where I want it. Go and test this against my calibrated light source. And I'll be back. 
Well, I tested the meter. It tests is fine. That's spot on, which is very good. So now I can remove that chrome button, remove the top cover, clean it, taking special care to clean the viewfinder eyepiece. And then we can fit it. So I'll have a look at this top cover. It's generally very clean. Uh, probably no point poking and prodding at the inside of it too much. I'll clean the viewfinder lens and the meter window. These components are plastic, easily damaged. Don't use any harsh solvents on them and don't rub any more than you need to. There's some slight marking on there. I'm not sure what's caused that. It could be a scuff of some sort. It could be something that's been spilt on it or some inappropriate solvent as I just mentioned. The eyepiece is glass of course, not plastic. It has a coated appearance, but the coating often shows faults. Uh, so whether it was originally coated, whether that's an illusion, because glass will oxidise and sometimes is left with a, a natural coating. And it could be that is what I'm seeing. I'll just do this rear piece on the prism. That's good. We have the meter window. As I said, that almost always falls out of these cameras. They just don't stay there. They're, if they're glued in at all, they've got hardly any glue. I'll just pop that into place in the top cover. And I will put a tiny drop of lacquer either side to help keep it in place while I put it in position. I don't think there's any reason to uh, go crazy. It can't get away. It's, it's bound there between the top of the meter and the top cover. It cannot escape. So this is just an ease an aid to assembly if you like. It is not an important gluing down of parts which would otherwise come adrift and run away. The flash. Now the flash think on these ones this one it's got a little plastic connector with a screw to hold the two pieces of wire together. That's something that was only on these earlier examples like this one. On later cameras that connection would have been a solder joint. You can tell this is an early camera 
because it lacks strap lugs. That's good. That's good. Right, I'm just going to wipe around the edges of that top cover before I drop it into place. It's a bit of dirt there. The meter shroud. the dust on that lens there the meter window needle window oh that's that's fine that's good Our meter button, the correct good one, not the uh, ugly one. Tighten it up a little bit more yet. Screw on the end of the top housing. Two countersunk screws down here in the housing at the rewind. Shaft position. It's about this time you drop that one down in the space and then have to remove all the other screws to lift the top off and recover it. And tighten this pinhead screw. Get a bit of rubber and uh, see if I can get a bit more grip on that and twist it in. I'm only going to do it up by hand. I'm not going to repeat the mistake of the last person. Check that the button moves. It does. Set that to something more reasonable. A 200 ASA. It seems to be a common film speed. It's good. Assemble the rewind. First the shaft. Now that has a very small tab on the end of it. That has to slide up inside the plastic section down here. It's easy to bugger it up getting that thing into place and I have seen plenty of these rewinds that have been effectively killed by someone being a little bit clumsy like that because what happens is they get it as far as this 
it's 90 degrees out or thereabouts from where it should be. They get the screw in on the top and they just twist it up. And it just drags that tag right up through the plastic where, it's, where there isn't a gap and ruins it. Sorry if I'm doing this off camera, it's a bit hard to see what I'm doing here. Ooh. It will not go. See if I can look down from the top and see what's going on. Of course it's as black as pitch in there being the inside of a camera, so I'm not getting any light. That's better. Yes, it is on that side. I was on the right side all along. Yes, done it. Okay, so what I was trying to achieve was see this tube come out through the top. If it doesn't come out through the top, you haven't got it assembled correctly. And if you haven't got it assembled correctly, the knob doesn't work correctly. So it's a bit of a trial to get that right. That goes in there. That goes in there. I can apply a bit of lubricant around the outside there because there's a clip in the body that it clips into and stays down in position against the tension of this spring that you see poking up. That's good. Right, let me tighten that up. Why is that not popping away? No, that's not quite correct. Let's just get that centered a bit better. No, something is not right. All right, back to the drawing board. Something shifted. Oh yes, that's 90 degrees out. How did I do that? 180 degrees out. That piece should be over there.
that seems better. All right, let's do it up. Okay, a rewind. On the Reflex 4, you've got the lever. You lift it up against the rim, press down on it, the rewind pops up. In that position, it's ready to rewind. Fold the lever back, press it into place. Job done. So that rewind's correctly assembled. Top cover's all finished. Camera just lacks its leatherettes, which I'll have to clean, and then I'll put back in place. This is a typical piece of leatherette. You can see on the back of it, all this is corrosion products, dried adhesive, things of that nature. And that all needs to be scraped off. Once I've got it, all that loose stuff scraped off, I'd normally give the leatherette a wipe with a bit of suitable solvent on a cotton bud. And cigarette lighter fluid does that well. Don't soak the leatherette, just moisten the cotton bud with a bit of lighter fluid and then use that to remove any remaining dust from the leatherette and then it's ready for application of glue and putting back on. So I'll just do the others. Alright, ready to start putting the leatherettes back. Let's start with the front. First I've applied some adhesive to the leatherette. Now I'm spreading it with a toothpick, taking care to get it good coverage right to the edges. This is a contact adhesive but it's not being used as a contact adhesive. With contact adhesive, typically you coat both surfaces, wait until they dry enough to be tacky, and then stick them together. This is a contact adhesive, but I'm only using it on one surface. And while it's still wet, I'll put it in place. Leatherettes typically shrink a bit with age as they dry out, so you need to take special care to see that they seat down firmly around raised areas like that piece at the front. Let's roll that around the edge of the body, make sure it's tucked up in against the hinge at that point. Although the leatherette, the uh, adhesive leatherette goes on with the adhesive still wet, it's not dripping. It's um, well coated, but it's not running. It's not going to run into the parts of the camera and cause things to stick. So there we go. Next piece. Prior to attaching the leatherettes, I've cleaned all the body where this is to go and wiped it down with cigarette lighter fluid, naphtha, to remove any traces of grease uh, that I'd managed to leave on there 
while I was servicing the camera because I can leave greasy fingerprints absolutely anywhere. You can get that all tucked in. Open the camera back. Make sure it's tucked in along the line of the catch, the line of the body at this end. Check it's all down flush. Tucked in neatly in the corners. That's good. I can stick the shutter release back. that back on there, do that screw up, don't go crazy doing that screw up, that plastic will crack and as has often been said before there are no spare parts or so few spare parts that it's almost the same as no and uh, do not break anything if you can avoid it. This leatherette patch goes onto that shutter release button. And it covers the screw. Also, it effectively locks that screw. So even if the screw had not been done up tight, it couldn't back out because the glue would be stopping it from revolving. Which is another reason why you don't need to do it go crazy doing it up. Now the leatherette for the base this is uh, a bit harder to get your glue spread on evenly because it's just very narrow sections and I don't want to get too much over the top so I'll just work at it as best I can Sometimes you have to have a couple of goes at applying the adhesive because it dries on you or you just sort of run out of liquid adhesive while you're busy spreading it out, just like that one. So I'll just apply some to this paper and transfer it over on the toothpick to those places that missed out, which is down here. Oh, so the problem I'm getting it on the fingers and everything is sticking. Make sure I've got cover on that end piece. And on that thin edge there. That'll do, that'll do. Alright. paper is covered in adhesive. Now I'm just going to make sure I break those threads of adhesive that are hanging over the edges. Otherwise they'll show on the surface. Here we have it. Although it's hard getting the adhesive spread evenly over these very thin edges, given the number of protrusions that poke through the leatherette, it can't get skewed. Once it's in position, it's not going to drift or rotate off. It's going to stay in the correct position. So there we have it. Just a little bit... Uh, speck of adhesive or something there. I'm just going to see if that will come off. It might be a thread of leatherette. Yeah it is. That's alright. That's good. The advanced lever goes on. Three screws. Again as for the shutter release 
The screw should be done up tight, but you don't need to go crazy. The screws won't be able to back out because they will have the leatherette glued to them. And here we have the leatherette patch. The sun's coming around the house now, so I've got to work quickly, otherwise the camera will be flared out. Either it patch to the rewind, the advance rather. That's glued down, that's glued down nice and snug. Good. Okay, the surround for the uh, tripod socket. It only fits on one way. Two small screws. Do them up tight. I'll move out of that sun. That's better. The last piece of leatherette is this little donut. It's warm here, I'm working in the sun and the adhesive is curing pretty much instantaneously so I have no working time. Alright, it's all the leatherette on the body. One good working reflex for just waiting for me to service the lens next, which I shall do, but I may put that up as a second series of videos. Thanks for watching.